Michael, yeah, Michael I saw um, uh, Conor McGregor, the famous Irish UFC fighter, come out strongly. I think police are now investigating to see some, whether some of his statements breached uh, hate laws. But he has been very, very outspoken about the explaining where this anger comes from and it's not just some far-right uh, uh, hooligan element. So I'm interested to mm. see how he has suddenly become the voice of this affected people. At the top of the show, we played a compilation of Irish politicians standing up in Parliament and just making the most absurd anti-white comment, comments. Is, is there a self-loathing in Ireland? Uh, the people are voting for this. Uh, is there, a, I don't know, a crisis in identity where they hate who they are? Well, as I used to joke with my friend James, who's sitting next to you <laughs> during the Australian lockdown, uh, once a penal colony, always a penal colony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And Ireland, once a slave state of the British, always a slave state. And in this case, we substituted 700 years of slavery under England uh, for a few years, a few decades of freedom, and then rushed back into the embrace of new slavers. They live in Belgium, of all places, who had Ireland gets taken over by Brussels on their bingo card. Uh, <laughs> and Irish politicians now are wholly... Uh, employed by the European Union. So they don't care what the Irish people think. They answer, and in their lights, understandably, to the EU and Belgium. And they're constantly citing EU laws over Irish sovereignty. Wow. Uh, many years That's ago, nice. I was flying back to Ireland and a woman, uh, Irish woman next to me said to me at that point, this was in the 90s, I feel like we're losing my country. And I said, what do you mean feel like? You already lost it. The minute you joined the... <laughs> Union, you lost yep, your sovereignty. Hundred percent. And James. that's what happened. All of this comes from that. And so, and so that's is that where then? I mean, I feel sort of like with Ireland, it feels like kind of the test case for a lot of other countries right now. And that if you look at this law that they're pushing through on hate speech, where essentially you know memes on your phone, the cops can look at your phone and say, "Hey, that's a hateful meme." You know, we don't like that, and you could wind up literally banged up for it. And I feel like this is almost the test model that they're trying it out in sort of a small country like Ireland to run it out uh, in bigger jurisdictions, including Force Australia. Tell us about this hate speech law and how mm. that would actually wind up working. Well, the hate speech law has been proposed now for a few months. It's been uh, uh, set aside, uh, except that the government has used this protest by, quote, far-right hooligans, uh, in response to the stabbing of uh, a little girl by what appears to have been an Algerian uh, immigrant who had been ordered deported, oddly enough, uh, and then was rescued probably by the NGOs who are the mm, do-gooder external forces all over Ireland. They're quite, quite, quite powerful. And they eventually got him citizenship. Well, people were finally just completely fed up with this. But to crack down on the people, Remember, the people don't matter. They're, they're, they're animals on a farm. And Ireland is viewed by the EU as a kind of backwater with a lot of empty space because, after all, the Brits emptied us out from 8 million to 4, <laughs> four million people in, uh, during the famine. But, you know, as John Cleese says in Faulty Towers, just don't mention the war. So we don't <laughs> mention the famine. But there's a lot of space in Ireland. Uh, it's it's being used. I think you're absolutely right, James. It's being used as a test case in order to see how far they can push a country that doesn't really have a lot of pushback in it. Uh, so many of the Irish, like me and my family and millions of us in Australia, uh, in New Zealand, in Canada, in the United States, uh, are immigrants not uh, by choice, but of necessity during the 19th uh, uh, century, particularly. And so I, Ireland is really defenseless. And because it doesn't have a real sense of its own nationhood, other than its cultural Irishness, it's finding it hard to fight back. And also, but Rita mentioned this, the politicians now have decided to adopt American terminology. That is, you're either white or you're not. Exactly, white, exactly. People, and not is good. 
So we literally have these discussions going on in Ireland where people say, why aren't there more black faces in you know, television shows about 15th century <laughs> Ireland? Michael, <laughs> <you're saying laughs> there weren't any. Uh, 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 you look at you like you're crazy. Exactly. Michael Walsh, great to chat to you. Sorry, I've got to cut you off there. <laughs> chat to you for hours. Really great stuff. Thank you so much.